Welcome everyone in this new video, the first of the new video course regarding Figma. During the course we will go through all the features one by one, trying to concretize our appeals each time and also creating final projects. So follow us on this journey. Today we will give an exhaustive introduction to the Figma universe. Let's first start with uh, what is Figma, what is it for and what does it have more than other softwares. So Figma is a prototyping program for design websites and applications, but not only that. Later we will go on to see what else you can do. So we are entering the field of user experience design, abbreviated as UX design, which is a burgeoning sphere of design engaged in the relationships between humans and information technology. So it designs the interaction of the person with a given system, including interface, graphics, industrial design, physical and manual interaction, improving usability and ease of use. So Figma allows you to design not only the graphics part, but it allows you to prototype, simulate precisely the dynamic interactions of users with the interfaces that we are going to design. So in reductive words, we can design how a button is pressed, what happens, how to switch from one screen to another, how to make a drop-down menu, and much more. Of course, we are talking about prototyping, let's clarify, because to make the actual site or app, you then need to translate all these static and interactive dynamic graphic into programming languages, as Python, JavaScript, or many others. Another key feature that distinguishes this tool lies in the fact that it is designed as a collaborative tool, since it is possible for several people to work on the same project at the same time from different devices, thus saving time and money, and it can also be easily shared in this way with customers who have commissioned the product or service, and then we can go and ask for immediate feedback to evaluate, confirm, or have changes purpose. To conclude the introduction, let us emphasize that Figma has another powerful weapon on its advantage, which is the fact that it can also be used only via the web, thus without having to download anything. Indeed, we have here the Figma homepage, which we open by simply typing in it into any uh, browser and we see that scrolling down, we are briefly presented with all the features and potentialities. We will if we click on products above, we see how Figma actually includes within it another tool called Figma Gem, which we will discuss later. For the left panel only, we also have downloads as the last item. By clicking on it, we will have the option to download instead an app for the computer if we are better off or also for mobile devices. But options for Windows or Mac OS. Or also the better function, which has the exact same functions, nothing more, nothing less. In fact, we can install both because the better one is more unstable, but it is useful for the developers to improve more and more the application. The latter panel, on the other hand, allows us to download the fonts uh, to our device, but if we use the desktop app, it will not be necessary. Therefore, we know that we have both options. In this tab, you can also see the pricing, that is the available plans, and you can safely use the free, free Figma plan, in which there are clearly limitations, but compared to the other plans, they are really few, in the sense that you can take advantage of Figma almost to the fullest. If you're not a company or at any rate, you don't have to take advantage so much of collaboration with other team members, so it is perfect anyway because you only have three shared projects in the free plan, while personal projects are unlimited. So as you see, here is the comparison between the plans. We have the startup plan, which is the free one, and as you see, it's free forever, unless Adobe decides to the mu. And here all the things that are included and not included in the various plans designed for various needs. A big real limitation of the free plan 
is that you cannot insert videos but only images. Articles. Also in this top bar, we have other two items. I recommend you to explore them thoroughly on your own over and over again over time. But now let's see briefly. Inside resources, we have so many other options. The first is the Figma blog with uh, topical articles on design, marketing, planning, computing, and more. In templates, we have ready-to-use templates provided by the developers themselves. Of course, they are divided by categories to facilitate the search. So we have the favorites, those suitable for brainstorming, those for diagrams, for meetings among teams uh, or with clients, research and design, or finally organization and planning. However, for each one, if we go to see specifically, there is an explanation of the most suitable context and functionalities. And also opening them, we have very useful guidelines. A different subdivision then is also given by rules in the sense that of the sphere of expertise and work that we are interested in and especially interest in companies such as design, engineer, marketing, and so on. In partners, we find the companies or startups that collaborate with Figma and provide program extensions, new resources or widgets. In addition, we have the possibility to work with the expert or become ourselves at some point upon application, recognized and certified experts by Figma. In plugins and widgets, we always find additions, for example, icons, transitions, special effects, app extensions, and much more, provided, however, by other users, some for free, some for a fee. In best practices, we have both a collection of in-depth guides of methods for using Figma and tips and tricks, which are quicker and more concise tips. In resource library, we have an additional section dedicated to learning more general design and design topics really well done on the basics of design, which is expressed in many other issues like product design, design thinking, accessibility and inclusion. And the same is true if we open up all the other titles here on the screen. UI design for interfaces, UX, what I mentioned to you earlier for experience, the overall interaction experience, prototyping and systems of design. And the same goes for the more fig gem related topics, so diagrams, brainstorming, meetings, etc. In reports and insights, we still have interesting articles that are no longer notional as much as to all intents and purposes current on the changing role of the designer in society. The business part that cannot now be put outside of this work in all its form and much more. In webinars, we find online presentations given first live and then re-uploaded on this page on various topics and many are available in English, a few in French and German. The last item, Help Center, is meant to help us learn Figma once again. There is the official Figma YouTube channel and also the possibility to contact a support team for any particular difficult issue to solve on our own. In community resources, on the other hand, the resource of the community on um, the set of users we then find products that is templates, extensions, details, icons, and more created by user for users. Some are free and some are not. Let's go on the fly and give an example for the most important part of Figma. There is prototyping. If we select the free only products, we will find this prototype switch between off and on, a toggle in short. We click open on Figma and we see that if we press shift, all the lines and indicators appear that are the descriptors of the dynamic process that then takes place. When in fact, we go to click play and see how it works. So even the detail 
of the deformation of the dot into a more squashed one intersection. These are all absolutely not insignificant thing that a real designer does not shy away from including if they have a motivation behind it. So now let's try first to log in and then access Figma through the internet and we can sign up with a Facebook account or Google or any email. It will then ask us to answer a serious question that will only be useful for Figma to prop the ground and see if we are individuals, companies, students, etc. Let's also try at this point to download the program for desktop. Let's do undownload again from here where we saw before and now we see that if we click on setup it will open Figma from here as well. Well, I will say that's all for today. Thank you for watching so far. If you found the video interesting, leave a like and a comment for any doubt or suggestion. Subscribe to the channel and if you'd like to support us, you can also join as a supporter to help us create new content every day and we will see you in the next video.